Hi, my name is Andrew, and I'd like to talk to you today about a Vim feature called Text Props or Text Properties. It allows you to, uh, as the description says, attach some uh, properties to text in a buffer, which usually uh, is about adding syntax how I think, but uh, it could, could be other things as well. Um, this is one component in what you could use for semantic highlighting. For instance, here's uh, like an imported component uh, in a React app, uh, and what you can see here is that I've underscored this component because it is a component that comes from uh, the local application, and I can use GF on it to open it uh, in, a new, uh, in a new split. Um, unlike this local component, which is already here, and so this underscore shows to me, you know, gives me a bit of a hint uh, about what I can do uh, with this symbol. And you can see that if I rename this component, um, the highlighting sort of sticks to the symbol. Now, this is important because this is not highlighting that comes from, uh, you know, particular regexes that are hard coded in the syntax. It comes from a piece of logic that I apply um, once the file is loaded. Now. In order to explain uh, how this might work, I'm not going to use this particular example because uh, it's a bit involved. Uh, you know, so I'm going I'm to use something slightly easier, something slightly simpler. Um, here is a Ruby class, and it has several methods. And one of these methods is private. And what I'm going to do is show you how we can highlight the private methods uh, in some, you know, some, some special way. So the first thing we want to do is check if we even have the text prop functionality. Um, if we are running an older Vim version, uh, we might want to finish the script early and just do nothing here. Um, then I'm also going to define some kind of a syntax highlighting, like actual colors for this custom group that I'm going to add. In this case, I'm just adding an underline, but you can do really you know, whatever you want. You can say highlight link. For example, we private method to operator, uh, you know, to link it to an existing group if you like. Um, this is just about the colors and not about the actual highlighting, right? This function is going to do uh, the actual work. And in order to make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, changing anything in the buffer uh, in terms of cursor position, in terms of scroll position, I'm going to save the current view and then I'm going to restore it in a finally block to ensure that it's always going to restore, be restored whatever we do. Then I'm going to start doing the actual work. First, we need to define uh, the, the kind of property that we're going to be adding. We're going to call it private method, um, and it's only defined for this buffer. This particular buffer is going to be highlighted with the syntax group, uh, and this you know, additional flag uh, it just has to do with sort of combining existing syntax properties. This is a detail that you can take a look at by checking help prop type add. And you can see all of the options you have, including stuff like, um, can you even uh, you know, change the actual words? Uh, will that, uh, you know, uh, will that keep the, uh, the syntax properties, stuff like that, priorities, all kinds of things, right? But for now, this is going to do the trick, right? And we're going to wrap it in a check uh, to see if we've already defined this, because if we just call this and we've, you know, we've already called this once, it's going to blow up. So we don't want that. Um, once this happens, like this, this, you know, this only exists to define the actual property type, right? This is uh, once that happens, what we want to do is remove all of the previous matches of this text property type. Just you go through the, the whole buffer uh, and remove them. And then we want to do, uh, you know, we want to go around and we actually want to add these properties. Go to the beginning of the buffer, find a private call. Uh, if you know, if, if we can't find a private keyword, let's just return. Let's just bail out. Nothing to do here. And then um, for each def keyword around the buffer, um, you know, till the end of the buffer, no wrapping around. What we want to do is we want to call prop add to add this property to the current line, to the current column, with the length of three, which is simply the length of the keyword def, right, of the type private method. So once again, this call defines the type, the property type private method, which has these, uh, you know, highlighting uh, properties and stuff like that. And this actually adds, you know, applies this property to the current line and column. And that's it. That's all we need here for uh, this little 
highlighting here this little underscore added to the private method we can add a uh, another private method here and you can see that it's not highlighted until we actually write the buffer um, this is how I've set this up initially we have an auto command that whenever syntax loads this function is being called and then it's being called again when, uh, on write so whenever the buffer is written right um, this is convenient to me. This is something that I mean, I'm perfectly happy with. If I write it, that's when it updates, right? I can move this private function here, write it, this one's private. Right? Move it here, this one's private. Um, if you, you know, if you want though, uh, if, we, if we want to do this, uh, we can actually you know, do a bunch of other things. Like instead of writing it, uh, you know, updating on write, we can update it once we leave insert mode, and we can update it once the text has been changed in normal mode. Uh, we can also do something like just trigger an update on cursor hold. This is this shouldn't be necessary, um, but if we do this and if we reload the buffer, uh, if I'm going to delete the private line, and you can see that the functions are now marked as public, paste it here. This one is now uh, yeah, private. You can say def bus end, and you can see like I just exited insert mode and it got updated. So you know it's pretty fast. Uh, it just goes once through the buffer uh, and it works just fine. Um, I personally don't need this kind of you know quick quick updating and maybe if it's a larger buffer uh, it might be slower. But yeah, for me it's more important to be able to read this kind of thing and as I make changes to know that uh, you know moving the lines here is not just gonna you know leave an underscore in the void here, but it's actually going to be attached to this uh, function definition. Now this is not perfect. Um, in fact, for example, it's not going to take uh, into account stuff like uh, nested classes, right? So this is technically a, a public method, but uh, you know it's under this private here. And I'm going to link. I in my personal uh, in my dot files, I actually have uh, this here method that does things in a bit more complicated way. You know, checks the current syntax name as well, just to make sure that the def is not a string, for example, or a comment. Um, but the the goal here, the goal in showing this is just to show you how easy it is to get started with this kind of thing. You don't need a language server. Uh, you know, semantic highlighting is usually done with a language server that gives information about the buffer based on uh, project inf uh, you know project analysis. That's fine. Yeah, you can use that. You can hook hook into this and use text props. Um, but you don't have to, right? Text props are just this tool that allows you to add highlighting and add maybe other properties to the buffer, uh, to pieces of text in the buffer. And they're just one part, you know, one component of it, and you don't need to do anything too complicated for it, really. If you have a personal use case, if you have something that you can think of, uh, you know, some symbol that could be annotated in a dynamic way, uh, you know, go for it. That's something you can do. That's something that's pretty easy to get into. Um, you do need a um, relatively recent Vim version. Uh, it's had text props have been added to Vim in version eight one oh uh, six oh seven. So it, you might you might have to update your Vim version. Um, if you're using NeoVim, this could also be a bit of a problem because NeoVim doesn't have text props. It does have something called ext marks, and you might look for the function and Vim both set ext mark, and uh, you know they. Presumably, they do sort of this, a similar thing, uh, and you should be able to figure out what to do uh, here as well. You know, I encourage you, also, you know, to read the documentation, and also I encourage you to uh, make a screencast if you'd like, uh, showing how you might do, you know, this kind of thing with with uh, with NeoVim's tools. X marks are uh, probably going to get more powerful uh, and more interesting. So, um, I yeah, I would definitely like to to see a screencast like that myself. In any case, thank you very much for your time and happy the mink.